Okay, now I'm ready. Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Canada. Yes indeed, that is my real name. I married into these shenanigans, so there's no stopping it. In today's video, we are going to be celebrating! I understand that I am like a minuscule little tiny YouTuber, but for me, a thousand subscribers, that's a reason to celebrate. So I just want to say thank you everyone. Every single one of you that pushed the subscribe button, I really appreciate it. And I hope to bring you entertaining content for a long, long time. So what I did over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook... Oh, you're not following me on those yet? Hey, I'll put that information right there for you. Come on over, we have a good time. Sometimes it's outtakes from these videos, other times it's things that I'm posting on my website. I don't know, it just sort of is me. Welcome to the inside of my head. Yes, this is what it looks like. So what we're going to be doing today is I asked for your questions, and I forgot my stuff. Crap. Dang it. I also don't have my coffee. Too. This is going well. This is not going well. Okay, now I'm ready. So what I decided to do today was answer y'all's questions. We're just gonna go through, we're gonna have our coffee, and we're gonna seam rip some stuff. Cause this is what happens when you try on the clothes that you say you're going to sell, and then realize it fits you and it looks really cute. So yeah. All right, let's do this. At Betty Page 2014 asks, I've seen people iron interfacing to pattern pieces to reinforce and protect them. What are your thoughts? I have some vintage Ann Adams patterns that are only one size and was considering this versus tracing. If you have pattern pieces that are falling apart, torn from previous use, ad nauseum, brown, darkening, going to tear, please, please, please do not interface them. Because what the interfacing will do, it'll reinforce it for a very short period and then it will speed up that decay. So please, 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 please don't do that. What you should do is there is some archival tape situation. I don't remember the name of it. I will put it down in the description box for you so that if you so like, you can buy it. That will allow you to preserve your pattern pieces and your envelopes much safer and longer. If that still doesn't work for you, I do advise using the, uh, it's not the fusible Pellon, it's the Pellon pattern fabric thing. I don't know, I also use it as diffusion on my light because that's who I am. That's what I would really advise. I advise you trace it out onto that Pellon because it sort of acts like fabric, but it's also like it's, it's sewable and you can cut it apart. It's great. It's lovely stuff. I really enjoy it actually better than the dotted pattern pieces that I have an entire roll of that I don't really know what I'm going to use it for, but whatever, it's fine. Again, I will go ahead and put that link down below for you. Oh, uh, yeah, any products that I'm mentioning today, I am also an Amazon affiliate, so I do make a small commission off of these, but there is in no way any extra charge to you. It's just a little commission for me that goes to support me and my channel. So that's what I advise. I advise tracing it off onto a pattern paper or a gift wrap or whatever you have lying around the house and then adjust it from there. Some people like to adjust the originals. I prefer not to. The only time that I adjust a pattern piece is when it's a PDF, because you've already printed off on printer paper and no one cares, except you. She also asks, when to change your needle? I use an approximate eight hours of sewing time guideline. What needle size? Right now I go by the needle package, but that seems misleading or too general. I'm probably not the person to be asking this question to. <laughs> uh, I use an all purpose needle for probably longer than you should. Uh, the only reason I changed my needle last time was because somehow I had bent it and it was slamming into the throat plate. So I may not be the person to ask that question to. I do have friends that tell you a, a new needle every project and then if you have projects that you don't care about you switch back to the old needles and for me that's a whole lot of work that I don't have time for and or care to do. Is this the way to do it? No, please don't be me. Please be better than me. I, I, am, I encourage all of you to be better than me. So yeah, um, basically, please don't be me. 
Next question. I have done one stitch. This is going well. At Geriatric asks, as a fellow wearer of spectacles, do you ever collect vintage eyewear, being that it is part of the vintage fashion category? I don't. Um, I actually have this singular. That's great. Good plan. I have this singular pair of glasses. If these break, I'm screwed. <laughs> these are from Costco. Aren't they fabulous? No, I, I don't collect vintage fat eyeglass wear. I've looked into it. It does intrigue me, but I have a ginormous head. In fact, these glasses, they said, shouldn't even really fit me because they had to spread them and they're plastic and my head's too big for them. So a lot of the time vintage I wear is far too thin for my face and digs into the side of my face, which gives me headaches and that's just no good. So I pretty much have one pair of glasses at a time and when they break, well, then we deal with it. But no, so I don't really do the vintage I wear thing. I do think they look very cool though. And I do appreciate everyone that wears them. She also asks, I'm sure people have hidden or stored things other than pattern pieces in their pattern packages. Grocery lists, maybe. What's the weirdest item you've ever found in a vintage pattern its former owner shoved in the envelope and forgot about? Okay, so that is a story in and of itself. So I buy a lot of patterns. And one of the things that I have found that really just sort of floored me, there was an envelope that I found one time that was extraordinarily heavy for the vintage pattern that it should be. So I go to open up this pattern and I go inside and I pull the whole thing out and this detrius just falls and goes thump. And I'm like, uh, what in the world is that? So I look at all the stuff on the desk and there is an ID from the 1960s. I believe it's from Caltech. I don't really remember. One, I just think it's awesome because a lot of the times you'll find vintage photos, you'll find receipts. I found the newspaper clipping of the original dress. I found drawings they did of their dress. I have found all types of just like little paper things. But this is the first time I've ever found someone's honest to goodness ID that you would use to go into work. So I hop on the internet and I am talking to Caltech and I am talking to this group on Facebook called Vintage Sewing Pattern Nerds, thinking that, you know, just sort of doing the holy crap, I can't believe I found this type of post. And someone comes on and tells me that they specialize in not archaeology, genealogy, and that they would love to help me find the owners of this. So I'm like, yes, please. I would love if there is living relatives of this person, I would love for them to have this back because I love the patterns and well, I'm going to take them and find new homes for them. I think I kept like one or two from that lot because she was a larger lady and hooray, we love those. So I'm talking to the people on Facebook and she's telling me that she has looked in her genealogy thing and she has found multiple living relatives. So she's gonna try and contact them through, I think it was genealogy.com or one of those places online with all the giant family trees situation. And we found an email of an actual human. I would got in contact with them and I ta started talking to the family and they were saying, oh yeah, well, we had to sell off all of our stuff because grandmother died. And we didn't realize that that ID was in one of the patterns, but they remembered their grandfather working there and no one knew what happened to any of that stuff. So I was actually able to reunite this ID card and family photo that none of them had seen before, which I thought was also cool, back with the original relatives of this person. But I love to be able to do that when I can, because to me, there's something so special about that piece of history that gets to go back to the people it belongs to. All right, the next question comes from Twitter. Anonymous asks, if you had one era that you could make from for the rest of your career, what era would it be? I'm assuming they mean clothes. Anything pre-50s for me, I think would have to be my answer. But if you made me pick one era and one era only, I think it would have to be the 1940s because it goes from like the cool 30s vibes into the more utilitarian everyday work. You've got shorts, you got pants, so I don't have to get rid of those. And then in 47, 48, you're starting to see the fit and flare, the fun dresses so I can still bring those in. So I think 40s would have to be my answer. Like if I have to stay in one decade and one decade only, it would be the 1940s because it covers, there's so many interesting rise and falls in that time frame. Well, folks, um, I didn't seem rip nearly as much as I had hoped to. Uh, I do want to thank you all for sitting through this with me. If you do want to come over and join these videos and be a part of the conversation, 
You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and DM me, chat with me, engage. If you enjoyed this video and this question and answer type, go ahead and give that like button a smash, hit that subscribe button, being sure to turn on the bell for post notifications. Thanks so much for watching, folks. We'll see y'all next time. Really, Florida? Now you're gonna rain? Great. Yes, that is your thumb on camera. I am still trying to figure out stories and such. I'm not really good with that yet. Um, I'm old, in case you can't tell. This really would be possible. <laughs> words. You gotta use words. Punches. <laughs> words.